What is up guys, today we're going to be disassembling this Apple AirPort that I got as my main router, but I switched recently to a 5G router instead of this old Apple AirPort Extreme. So I thought it would be a good idea to do a teardown of this device. In fact, I have an Apple AirPort Mini as well, which I could be doing a teardown in a video later on, who knows, but for now we're doing this AirPort Extreme. So on the front, we have this little indicator light, which will flash amber if there's no signal or a problem with the network, and green if the network is working fine. On the back, we have three ethernet ports, and then we have this bottom one plug into the modem and then directly into this router we also have power in a usb and a reset button on the bottom you can see there's the apple logo on this little piece of plastic with what looks to be little slits for a fan to blow out of and the information about the device after popping the bottom off which had no screws whatsoever we can see three things immediately this heat sink over here power port and these annoying screws after some prying we can see that inside there's actually two separate halves we have one side for power which is this half over here and one side for the processing and what receives and puts out the networking signal now apple does this in a lot of their devices one of the older imacs the imac g3 to be particular actually had two separate sections one for high voltage and one for low voltage like the computer components so this is a pretty common theme with apple devices now apple being apple put the screws to take this out of its housing all the way down at the bottom here you can see the screw hole and one of the screws is actually still in place down here so i had to get an extra attachment just to take it out luckily i have a pretty advanced tool set here for taking apart weird electronics that don't want to be taken apart hence the weird screws but if you want to disassemble your own apple airport extreme you are going to need a special bit a lot of people call this bit right here the star bit it's hard to see on camera looking at the high voltage block of this device we can see that there's what looks to be the power supply and this really weird looking fan over here it almost looks like the fan that would be on some sort of dyson product over on this side there's not a lot going on or a lot that we can see at least because it's covered up by heat sinks oh real quick before we see inside of this heat sink right here make sure that if you're liking the video so far to like and subscribe if you do that would be greatly appreciated as it helps the channel out a lot and make sure that i continue to upload frequently after removing these ridiculously shaped and overly large heat sinks you can see underneath and take a look at the chip that processes this off looking at this chip we can see that it runs off a broadcom which is what just about every apple laptop and device runs off of I have an iMac running Windows, video on that coming out soon. It also has a Broadcom chip in it. They might be chips for other machines as well, but these Broadcoms are specifically designed for Apple machines. And then also underneath this heatsink, there's another secondary chip and a couple large capacitors. So like I said, a ridiculous sized heatsink. Down here we have two chips that the label is no longer visible after thermal grease was applied. And once again, blocks are way too big. They don't need to be this large. Taking a look at this housing, we can see that there's a full six antennas mounted on here. Flipping it over, we can see all the cables connected to all the different antennas. And on the board, we can see where the antennas were connected. And some of the pins were torn off with the connectors because these connectors are not the strongest. All right, with the shielding off of the high voltage power supply, we can see that there's not really a lot going on inside. Pretty basic power supply we have here. We've got a large discharge capacitor right here, a couple of coils, and the transformer underneath this black box. There's also a what looks to be custom full bridge rectifier right here, and a couple more capacitors. And last, but definitely not least, we're looking at this weird fan. On the back of the fan, we can see it's a Sun Maglev, and it takes 12 volts DC and 4.2 watts. I do have to give it to Apple, though. This fan is very silent. Well, that is going to have to wrap it up for today's video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you made it this far, don't forget, if you like the content, like and subscribe. And as always, see you in the next one. On the back of this board right here, the central board, we can see that there's a huge bios battery as this device does have battery backup as you can access it remotely from your computer since it's apple they really overdid it